Hey guys and welcome back to the Codex Legacy channel. In this video we'll take a look at SymPy and how we can use trigonometric functions and trigonometric identities in it. Now you may have already seen me using cos and sine in previous videos, but there's actually a lot more to it than just those, okay? Because they're like 20 different functions, okay? Cos and sine are just two, but there's so many more. Like there's cos, sine, 10, but then there's the hyperbolic versions like um, sine, uh, etch, cos h, tan h, okay, and there's also the inverses, like sec, cosec, and ta uh, what was it, a tan? No wait, that's arc, like there's also arc sine, arc cos, and yeah, there's sec, cosec and sec, okay, then there had the hyperbolic versions of these as well, okay, so it can actually get quite expansive, there's a lot of different functions, okay, you, and you may not even know they exist, so I'm just going to be mentioning them all here, even though we won't be using all of them. All right. So besides that, there's also some other things that I need to mention, like regarding degrees and radians. Okay. Because SymPy only takes in radians. Okay. Because radians are used in mathematical computation. Okay. You don't really use degrees. Okay. But I will teach you guys how to take input in degrees and then convert them to radians and so on. Okay. So let's not chatter for too long and let's get started. So from SymPy. Okay, now um, in a scenario like this where I'm going to be using so many different trigonometric functions, I would just, to save myself the trouble, I would do from SymPy import all. Okay, uh, otherwise normally you've seen me, you know, do stuff like this, right? From, Sim from SymPy import symbols. Okay, so I'm not going to do that in this video because it's going to be a very big bother having to write out so many different function names. So I'll just, I just won't do that. So for starters, let's just create some symbols. Okay. X and Y, that should be enough. Okay. And now let's just create some basic trigonometric expressions and substitute some values in them. Okay. Just to see that is everything the same as before. Okay. This is cos and let's make one for sine. Okay, now I want to substitute some values into these. It's the exact same process as how I've taught you guys before in the video about expressions and how to create them, how to modify and solve them. Okay, it's the exact same method. So all you need to do is just take the expression, expression one, and then use the subs function on it for a substitute. Then you do x, okay, because you want to substitute the value x you start, not the value x, the unknown, the symbol x, you want to substitute it with the value like three. Okay, let's do that. And let's also do it for zero. Okay, and let's do the same for sine. Okay, so expression two. Okay, four, four outputs. So let's see what happens. Okay, and the output will be a little unexpected. Okay, because over here you can see that this gives us one. Okay, that's cos. Okay, sine gives us a, a zero at zero radians. Okay, zero radians, zero degrees. Okay, now expression one and expression two, when you substitute the value three into them, they don't give you a numeric value. They give you a representation. Okay, and that's just how SymPy works. And I've discussed this before, that SymPy will primarily aim to give you a representation, okay? For example, you try to take the square root of a value, okay? To maintain accuracy, SymPy will not give you the numeric decimal value. It'll simply give you the representation, an object, a square root object, okay? So that's how SymPy works. All right, so, but in certain scenarios, you may want the numeric value. So I'm just gonna teach you guys how to do that. So all you need to do is use the n function Okay, and again, normally this is something that you would import. So you use n, n basically, you know, numeric. Let's do that over here as well. And go. Okay, and just to be clear, the reason why SymPy doesn't normally do this, because technically speaking, this is more accurate than this. Okay, because these are decimals and decimals are technically in the end, just an approximation, the more decimal places you include, the more accurate it'll be, okay? So yeah, that's what the numeric values look like. And yeah, and if I do 3.142 in here, you might notice that 
this will become almost 360 degrees. So we'll get a value close to, that's close to minus one, that's close to zero, okay? But what if you really want to pass in 360 degrees or 180 degrees, but you can't do that, you don't know their radian values, okay? And you won't go around approximating pi to that extent, now will you? Uh, but luckily, there's an easy enough way of doing this. Let me just remove some of this clutter. Okay, now there's a library that gets downloaded with SymPy that's called mpmat. Okay, this is a dependency that SymPy uses, so it's always going to be on your system, I think, at least. Uh, it's on mine, at least, without having to install it or download it. So I'm going to import the radiance function from there, from mpmat, import radiance. Okay, and I'm going to go here. I want to substitute the value 360, okay? and I will do radians, and I'll pass in the degrees, okay? This radians function takes in the degrees as a parameter and then converts that to radians, okay? So I'll just copy this out and we'll do it for expression two as well, okay? And let's try this out. Okay, now this is completely accurate, okay? Uh, surprisingly, I didn't expect that. I thought both of them would be a bit inaccurate-ish, but okay. So this kind of wraps up the basic concept of trigonometric functions in SymPy. They are, again, just to reiterate, different functions, okay? We can use tan, we can use uh, sec, we can use tan, okay? We can use cosec, we can use arc sine, we can use arc cos, and uh, also a tan as well. Then there are the hyperbolic versions, sine h, cos h, and tan h, okay? And there might be one or two more that I can't remember, but that's basically the entire concept, okay? There are different functions, okay? The only thing that's different is really the name and the concept behind them, okay? The parameters are the same. They just take in radian values and they'll give you the corresponding output. What exactly these functions are is something that you should definitely take a look at. Uh, if you don't already know them, these are entire mathematical concepts. Look them up online if you're interested, okay? I'm just here to tell you how to use them in SymPy, okay? Uh, other than this, there's one function left that that's worth discussing, which is the trig simp function. You might have heard of the simplify function in SymPy, and that's a very general way of simplifying expressions, okay? It applies like dozens of different simplification techniques, okay? But trig simp, Trig simplify or trigonometry simplify is a function that's designed only for simplifying trigonometric, tri trigonometric expressions, okay? And this makes it faster because it doesn't apply so many different combinations. If you know that the expression you're trying to simplify is a trigonometric expression, then you can use trig simp, okay? Instead of using the generalized version, uh, you know, the generalized version simplify. So just to see what this does in person, I'm going to just print out print out um, uh, identity over here. I'll do sine x to the power 2 plus cos x to the power 2, okay? And you might already have recognized this identity, okay? Sine squared plus cos squared, and this should give us 1. Okay, so let's run this, and this should give us our output one. Yes, exactly. See, this is what TrickSim does. It simplifies these expressions and makes it simple. Okay, so if you have a very long trigonometric expression, you can use this in the attempt to simplify it. So yeah, that's about it. We have more content on SymPy coming out. Okay, the next video is going to be on SymPy matrices, and there's obviously going to be more stuff. Also, some practical examples on where SymPy is used in real life applications. Okay, a lot more stuff. So do subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave some comments, let me know what you thought, and I'll see you guys in a later video.